Good morning and welcome. I should say good afternoon. It is afternoon, it's after 12. We'll just give it a couple of minutes, guys, so a few more people come in and then I'll get started with my talk about Bridget's Grove and the Lights of Passage and Shield and a Gig and then um, the four doorways of Bridget's Celtic Wheel of Illumination. So there you go. Just bring a little bit of sage around all of us now before we start. Okay. So I'm just going to play a little bit of music for a minute or two until the numbers scatter and then we'll get started. Okay, you're very welcome to my talk today on Bridget's Grove of Illumination. And before I start, I wish you all the harmonious, balanced blessings of equinox in mind, body, and soul. May they all be brought into balance and harmony for you today. And um, just in case you don't know, I'm on again tonight, tonight live at 8.30, holding a special celebration ceremony for equinox, a time of celebrating the balance of light and shadow we all carry shadow as human beings and we are all light so it's about balancing those and healing that aspect of us in the unconscious that's hidden from us and the whole work of working in bridget's grove and with shield the gate the rites of passages and the four doorways of the celtic wheel of illumination they're all part of transformation and change and gently weaning us off old habits and bringing in new ways of living so it's very much about you know bringing forward the positive from within us that's hidden in the place of fear sometimes so it's about embracing and healing as i say hugging the monster yeah it's like the rites of passage are all about embracing our fears and overcoming them and growing and experiencing new growth and that's the purpose of the work that i've been doing for the past 30 years in ireland i've been honoring and holding sacred space and honoring bridget as a goddess all of those years and back in two i was i think it was 1995 we published the first celtic calendar with bridget right in the center of it i printed over two thousand of these they were a1 size and i gave them out at every psychic show around the country to promote to plant the seeds about the goddess bridget and about the story behind bridget being a daughter of the two they done in the fairy folk of ireland and the power that she carried as a female aspect of the goddess and it was all about healing the goddess as i said to a friend of mine back many many years ago to show lovely uh, teacher of dance i said to her you know it's all about the goddess it's about bringing back the feminine to bring balance back into our world there's been a great imbalance for such a long time but it begins with me it begins with you the change begins with you 
be the change that you wish to see in the world. So it's about holding that space within you and feeding it and nurturing it. And that's where the feminine nurture of Mother Earth and nature and the, the goddess and a bridge come into being and the protection that she casts around all of us within nature. During these lockdown times, people are beginning to realize and connect more with nature now than ever before. They're beginning to realize oh, after a walk in the park or walk in the woods or walk by the river, all of a sudden I'm feeling connected. My first meditation cassette that I launched in 1990, whatever it was, five, I, I called it discovering the stillness within. And I took a photograph of a waterfall flowing down into a pond, into a pool, actually. And somebody came up to me and says, that's not a very still photograph, is it? I said, it's nature. And that was 25 or so years ago. People just still hadn't got the, the connection at that point to realize that standing by a flowing river brings a connection back to us that we've lost. The nurture, the nurture of a, a loving mother, um, the support that we need as children to grow into positive adults, the rites of passage from child to adolescence into adulthood in an empowered way and the way that all the sacred s symbols and ceremonies that were done for generations have were kind of pushed away and they were replaced with something that has created this desperate imbalance in our world and in our country today so the rites of passage would be the journey into self-empowerment and about self-reliance self-confidence self-belief and most of all self-care and of course, self-care equals self-love. So it's about engendering that. But if people, you know, if children are born to generations of women who've been repressed, damaged and hurt and ridiculed and made feel, you know, second best in their own land, how can those women grow to be nurturing mothers when they themselves have been deprived of the equal rights how can that be so? They, they will be resentful and angry and disconnected from themselves and disturbed because they weren't given the respect and the nurture that they needed as young girls. So you see, it's vitally important that we nurture the goddess, not only in the women, but also in the men. The men need this as well. And men look to their mothers for nurture. And if the nurture is not there, if the mothers for generations have been carrying this repression and almost this shame within them, um, we have a lot of work to do. So honoring the goddess, honoring each woman as being sacred, we come to the point of rites of passage and Sheila Nagig. And the symbolism of Sheila Nagig is she represents the vulva, the sacred vulva, the, the, the journey and the gateway that we all take to come here. So in ancient times, the Druids knew that the female, the, the woman, held the power to give life and that she should be honored as such. So when we go back into ancient times, we had the Brehan laws here in Ireland, where women had a right to hold land equal to men and to hold livestock as well. So you see, we've moved a long way away from that. Um, the Brehan laws were community centered and based there were people and how would you call it there were people centered laws whereas today we have laws which are driven by economy and you know economic growth and profits so very different laws today about protecting certain people's interests and basically keeping everybody else in one place so what we have today is we've got an imbalance within our reality and back in those days it was about mutual respect balance Equinox today is about bringing balance in and I will be holding a ceremony tonight at 30 which will be about bringing balance of mind body and soul together conscious unconscious spiritual physical bringing all everything into balance bringing us into a place of balance so healing the fear healing the disconnect healing the lack of nurture is something that i discovered was the way forward and how best to represent this would be true you know embracing the goddess so for me i decided to embrace bridget because i seen her has been taken by a religious group and moved into some form of sainthood when in actual fact 
originally all the stories that were told about Bridget are Bridget stories. She was written into the story books by the early Christian monks, but she was there before that, as were the wells, and they still are there today. So hence today we've got a great devotion to Our Lady. She would be the closest within the Catholic tradition that we would see as being a goddess. And people are hugely drawn and devoted to Our Lady, or as Mother Mary as I like to call her. So she's there and she, if you go right around the country you'll find these grottos everywhere, right across the land of Ireland. Grottos all built to honour Mother Mary. So you see she's already in her psyche. So it's just about bringing her out a little bit more. And that's what um, the Bridget's Celtic Grove is all about. It's about honouring the sacred feminine within all of us. Us men need to transition into that place of awareness. And that's the rites of passage to empower our men to become warriors, to protect the weak and the vulnerable, the women, the children and the old. That's the purpose of a warrior. It's to hold space and protect the village. And this is the way that we bring our men our young boys into manhood teaching them the way of balance from within themselves to reconnect with the source of power within themselves to self empower to create self awareness self confidence self empowerment to be self reliant to be independent and in these days you see a lot of people going off grid they want to become independent to hold their own space and truly that is the way forward that we become more sustainable in the way that we live moving forward with mother earth and again mother earth bridget goddess all the same concept of connection to the land to the earth and if we see our planet as a woman as a female you know she is wounded She's badly wounded and that's the response we get as we get it through the storms and the floods and all the other stuff that's happening around our land at the moment. So I've got some people who've come in to say hello and I'm just going to welcome them all in before we continue with the talk, guys. And um, don't forget I'm on again at five past three giving a talk on Chuck Ellis, the sacred Celtic sweat lodge ceremony. And I'm on again at quarter past five giving doing Journey of the Drum. And Joe McKinney is in says, how are you there? How are you, Joe? Welcome. Good to have you with us. Sheila Karen says, hi, Dermot. Good afternoon. How are you doing? And Freddie Roberts is in, says, connected. Thank you so much, Freddie. That's the connection for today. Happy Equinox to you, too. And um, Sandra Redmond is in, says, beautiful. Thanks, Sandra. Bernd at Mooney is in, says, good morning, everyone. Francis Kelly is sharing it with Sam Bulger. I hope Sam can make it in. Uh, Donnie Mary McGarrell is in from, I think it's Massachusetts. You were in yesterday as well. Thanks for coming back in again, Don. Lovely to have you with us. All the way across the pond. Belinda Ward is in. How are you doing, Belinda? Wise words from says Donna Mary McArdle. Well, it's you know, when you've been working in this area for 30 years holding space for the sacred feminine, you come up against all of the barriers within yourself and outside of you of fear. And the main fear is, you know, what is the fear? Fear is of being vulnerable. I've been when you're vulnerable, you're you're truthful, you're fully present in your power. You know, it's the gentle way of moving forward. Francis Kylie's in and says, hello, welcome, Francis. Good to have you with us. And keep the goggles on so I can read the messages coming in there. So, um, yeah, it's rites of passage for a man to transition from, you know, a place of normal um, machoism to a place of vulnerability and then find your middle place where you can hold your center, hold your boundaries and assert yourself. If you're not grounded, you can't really assert yourself because you're not holding your space. You're up somewhere else. You're not actually in. And that puts you into conflict with yourself to start off. And then that conflict comes at you. So the rites of passage is about coming into your own power and being grounded, fully present in your body. Forget about being present in the moment. That comes later. The first thing to do is to learn how to become fully present in your own body. And our bodies have a wonderful way of building up what we call cellular memory. Yeah, and the subconscious mind can contain certain memories that distress us and put them in little compartments and put them into the back of the subconscious mind. But the body never lies. Body talk will tell you that something is wrong. You will get a you get a pain in your back. You get a pain in your neck. A pain in your shoulder. You will get sick. Your your physical body will manifest a psychosomatic disorder, which will show some sort of illness to tell you that you are not flowing easily your energy is not flowing through you 
So to go back and heal that place, we need to go through a gentle process of rolling back the layers. So from the shield and the gig imagery of going through the canal, the bear canal to be, to be born, we call that the gateway from the spirit world to this physical world. We've all come here through the gateway of shield and the gig. That's the first stage. So we're born. And then we come into the physical world and we need to go through the process of initiation from infant, child, childhood into adolescence, adolescence into empowered adults. And that's what the four doorways are in Bridget's Celtic Wheel of Illumination. We go around each year and each year we remove further layers of resistance to our potential. The fear is that we are all powerful. Nelson Mandela coined that phrase so many years ago. So the thing is that we're sometimes afraid of this power. So we can stay in the disconnect and in the victim blame place, or we become empowered and we can take responsibility for what we're experiencing in the moment and realize that we have the power to create it. We have the power to manifest. So manifestation is about gathering and creating so as we look into the spring of today and the spring equinox and the planting beginning and welcoming the harvest later in the year the power of planting the seeds that brings the growth that brings the harvest and that's what the work is about as we go around the wheel manifesting and supporting positive change from within us for a tree or a plant or a seed to grow it must first put its roots into mother earth to grow and to be nurtured into a strong plant that goes up. So the root network and the support from the goddess is vitally important. So the grove nurtures this within all those who are members of the, of the grove. And we hold this sacred space, not just for us, but for all man, humankind, for everybody out there. And the four leggeds, the creepy crawlies, the feathered ones, the winged ones, the standing ones, the stone people, all of those we hold the space for because everything is connected, because everything is energy. So what we need to be able to do is to constantly remind ourselves of this vitally important connection that exists within the relationship between us, the feminine intuitive aspect of ourselves and the land as goddess, as a living presence in our lives. She is there in Ireland. Bridget walks the land today. She's one of the two of the Danum, the fairy folk. She walks this land today. And on her day of the night before her day of Imbolg, she walks the land and she blesses all the houses. She blesses anything that's left outside the houses to be honored, placed in, in her honor within the homes for protection. So you see, our ancestors knew about this. They honored it. And we do the same thing in Bridget's Grove. It's about hailing the goddess Bridget. So the rites of passage and change and, and the process of change. So, you know, you won't just walk into this grove and it change will happen like that. We have to plant the seeds and then they have to be nurtured as we go through the growing season of the wheel. So I hold a one year course, or we call it a teaching or a training course for people to come and to engage in the process of illumination. The process of embracing nurture and new growth and challenge being challenged to change and within the human condition there is huge resistance to embracing change we all seem to resist it and we fight against it so and um, there's many different reasons for this and through the the four doorways we go through different rites of passage at each doorway and before we get to each doorway there's a process that people engage in and it's different for every person and as we say, there are many paths that go to the same place. And that's what this is about. Everybody finds the journey different and everyone is, finds the challenges different. And everyone is supposed to find it different because every person is unique. No two people on this planet are the same. But yet everybody wants to be normal. The only normal I know that exists is the one on the washing machine, the program Normal Wash. Yeah, that's it doesn't exist anywhere else in my reality because everything else is in constant flux and change as the universe moves every day the stars move 
the planets move, the moon moves around the earth, the earth moves around the sun. There's constant movement. There's no fixed moment when everything is perfect. Everything is in constant change. So in other words, it's like the rivers flowing to the sea. They don't stop. They've been going for thousands of years. They'll be going for thousands of years after we're gone. Our chi flows through our bodies the same way. And at this time of spring equinox, we're welcoming in the flow of energy from the roots coming up through the trunk of the tree to feed the leaves. The spring buds are coming out. The leaves will start to show and then eventually the fruit will come. Same for us. The energy in the feet, we need to ground it. It's coming up. The Kundalini is rising through all of us. The goddess is rising from the earth. We need to integrate it into our conscious awareness and channel that beautiful energy into creative things. So going out and planting, planting, yeah, planting vegetables, flowers, whatever, earth, you know, plant stuff, plant yourself in the ground, visualize yourself like a tree going in, and you'll find that that support and nurture that's there, there's a, re there's a relationship, there's a loop between us, the sky and the earth. And it's about keeping the balance between the sky and the earth and us in the center. So if you visualize Father, Sky, Mother, Earth being like our cosmic parents, the yin and yang, balancing within us, nurturing us to be fully present in the moment. We're like a light bulb. We need two polarities to light. For such a long time, we've been just getting one. We're getting the one from the sky, but we need the one from the earth. So we need the positive and we need the negative coming together to illuminate us. And that's what the illumination process is about. But for many different reasons, we build up unconscious fears of making that connection because it takes us back through a rebirth process where we journey back now through Sheila and the gig, through the gateway, through the gateway of rebirth, to the gateway of healing the disconnect from ourselves, from our mothers, from our grandmothers, our great grandmothers, all through the generations and from the grandfathers, the fathers, grandfathers and great grandfathers as well. So the ancestral lineage within us needs to be cleared and healed. So hence we have National Ancestral Family Healing Day, which we hold every year at Sound to honor the ancestors and the collective baggage that we hold on the island of Ireland. So with that, I'm just gonna go back into some of the comments. If you've got a question, please do post them up guys and girls. Um, Susan Largeson says, hiya there. Hiya, Susan. Lovely to have you here. Francis Kai, this is lovely. Not sure how I stumbled upon this slide, but glad to be here. Hiya, Francis. Great to have you with us. Audrey McLean says, hi, Darren. Loving your talks and the videos. So interesting and educational. Thank you. Audrey, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you're finding them informative because, as you see, I, I don't make notes. Everything is something is, I've learned from the last 30 years of, well, actually 40 years. I'm, I'm 30 years in this work full time, and, and I was 10 years previous to that doing my own dark night of the soul and coming out of my own shadow and trying to heal myself from deep, dark depression and suicide ideation. So I had all that to struggle with. I had my own demons. So my journey out of that is what I use today to help other people to recover. And, you know, I particularly want to reach out to young men today who are looking for answers, you know, and looking for answers outside of themselves when actually, in fact, the answers lie within them. And, you know, it, it's still the same today. The majority of the people on here this morning are all female, all women, nothing wrong with that. But you see, young men and men of my age need to embrace the goddess within themselves. Back in my day, I grew up with two wonderful great uncles who both read the tea leaves and they had a massive dedication to um, Our Lady, to Mother Mary, the Blessed Mother as they called her. So what you have to understand is that that generation of men, a lot of them took the, what was it called back then? They took the, the pledge to no longer drink alcohol because a lot of them could see that it was raising up unconscious shadow from within them, demons almost. And a lot of men had been traumatized and bullied and intimidated. And that was their rites of passage, you know? And bullying does so much damage. I mean, personally speaking, I had it done to me and uh, it took me many, many years of my life to overcome it, to fulfill my potential. And in, in between that, I was very angry and very frightened. So you, you, you see that it's about initiating the, the men, the boys. So Sheila and the gig is the gateway for rebirth. We travel through that gateway to be reborn. And what I mean by that is that we learn how to embrace our fears and to let go. 
to embrace that vulnerable side of ourselves the feminine intuitive side when you think about it on the masculine side we've got power control drive on the female side we've got spirituality spontaneity we've got creativity we've got intuition all the wonderful creative stuff is on the female side so naturally we need to blend the two together to create a harmonious being and presence for ourselves so that's the balance that equinox is about bringing those two sides of us together but if you're in denial of the existence of the goddess how can you bring balance you know how can you i've never heard of anyone being born through a male before maybe there will be but not yet the female is the one with the power and the ancient druids knew this that the, the goddess the female the woman had the power to give life same as we put the plant the seed in the earth the mother energy nurtures the seed to grow so it's mother earth who has the power to create life so in some ways we've got it the wrong way around and of course we know that women are natural nurturers and natural healers of course they are but you see there's a regime came into this country and discredited all these people and demonized them as witches and yes whipped them raped them and burnt them alive in front of the whole village so imagine the fear that put into all the other young women yeah so that's the stuff that we have to go back and heal from generation and reclaim the power of the goddess to bring her forward and to illuminate and to nurture our men as well as our women and our young women and our young men yeah so that's the story of um she in the gig in in my interpretation of her some are calling her saint patrick's wife and that the 18th of march is supposed to be her special day so that's an interesting concept one to be looked at but definitely celebrating the goddess in whatever way she comes forward i welcome it as i said i've been planting seeds for 30 years with my posters celtic calendars with bridget in the center centerpiece of the of the calendar and as I said earlier, and I printed over 2,000 of them. They were big, big posters, A1 size, and I gave them, and children loved them all over the place. People asked, and it was mostly children that were grabbing them off the stand, you know. So they're the seeds that were planted 30 years ago. <laughs> so they're bearing fruit now. Let's go through the messages again, guys. Let us see, where's my phone? It'd be easier if I do it on the phone. That way I'm not leaning across the candle and getting myself singed. Now... Yeah, just check in there. See, that's good. Okay, now she will do them from here. Okay. Uh, Bear the Moon, you love, uh, yes, love the teachings from your authentic experience, simple explanations and inspiring. Well, you see, it's all about sacred imagery and about symmetry and balance, which is where we're coming to today with Equinox. And it's the imbalances that create the challenges and the lessons for us. They're not problems, they're lessons. And if you can embrace them as lessons and as challenges, like this whole COVID flu virus thing, um, it's a huge challenge to all this, but there's a massive learning and a massive awakening call coming through for humankind at the moment with that. So, um, uh, Donna Mary McGardle, the main problem with the world is today is the disrespect and subjugation of women. What an amazing world it would be if divine goddess was honored. Women could truly change the world. The energy would dramatically shift. It's shifting as we speak, Donna. I've been planting seeds for over 30 years, as many other practitioners across the world have been doing, to support the shift in goddess awareness. 20 years ago, this coming year, we opened a special summer school in Athlone. And we brought in medicine people from America. And what we did was we brought medicine in and we done prayers to initiate and reawaken every sing single sacred site in Ireland. So we were right smack in the middle of Ireland. We sent out prayers and we've done a full 14 days of ceremony almost every day, hours every day, dedicated to sending out this vibration of acknowledging and raising the goddess. Um, few years back i got invited to the first goddess spirit rising festival in malibu near malibu beach in california and as one of the few men to be there actually was the only male presenter there i was honored to be there and i asked the facilitators it was an all women's conference and gathering and festival why was i allowed in and they said you used the magic word and i said what was that bridget <laughs> so that got me in so there you go so um yeah it's about holding the truth and you know sometimes people 
are very uncomfortable with the truth because when you're working and teaching as a visionary like I am as a storyteller, you speak from the visions that are channeled through to you and you share that knowledge. And as you share the knowledge, it awakens people. And there's two things they do with that. They either reject you and shoot the messenger or they embrace it and they begin the transition of transformation going through their own Baird Canal. And the fear of going through this is that I'm going to have a breakdown. No, you're going to have a breakthrough. And that's what we, why we do the ceremonies the whole way around the year. And we also do the 13 full moons as well. It's about supporting the transformation and the illumination of your soul right through the whole 12 months of the year. So all of this work takes place within Bridget's Grove and the illumination process. Um, I teach advanced core illumination integration healing. The integration is vitally important because as a lot of you will know, you go for a healing session, you feel wonderful during it, you come out afterwards and you feel, oh, that was wonderful. And within three or four days, it's gone. So it wasn't integrated. Integration is like planting, transplanting a little tree. You must nurture the roots in the new position and tend to it for a while before the roots finally settle back in and the tree overcomes the shock of being moved then it grows healing is the same the support and the nurture is part of the follow-through integration work so that's why sometimes we need to go around the wheel a couple of times you know? and later today at five past three i'll be giving a talk on the chak alice the celtic sweat lodge back in ireland we had our own sweat ceremonies the same way the first nations people in america had the NEP sweat lodge we had on chak alice here the sweat house so I'll be talking about that and how I came to be in my first sweat ceremony up in the northern Yukon, three and a half, it's five and a half thousand miles away from here. And that's something I'll share with you in the afternoon talk at five past three. And again, the, this, the sacred lodge ceremony and the goddess work and Bridget are all connected because I see the lodge as the womb the womb state of going through the rebirth process of healing our fears and transforming again. Change is something we all struggle to accept and to embrace. So when somebody comes and starts holding it up like a mirror and saying, have a look at this, maybe you need to change this. You know, I'm very used to um, people resisting change. And, you know, as the messenger, I now wear a bulletproof vest because I've been shot so many times. <laughs> um, yes, I completely agree with everything you're saying, Donna. Absolutely. Blessed be the goddess. The energy which dramatically shift thank you for the work you do well all we can do is keep holding the space the shift is happening as we speak you know this big convergence of light and shadow is going on i predicted about six months before this COVID stuff came i said there's a massive convergence of light and shadow coming soon and if you're looking at the moment the light has come up and it's now in balance as we speak today on a spring equinox day the light and the shadow are together. The shadow of winter is, is going away and the light is traveling further up and further, all the way up to summer solstice. So every year we have this cycle of the light coming out, the illumination process, the new growth, the spring forward, embracing the new energy, adding more and more light to our being while we're here. Every year we shine and move forward with that. And that's what it's about, it's about becoming brighter and lighter and happier and more joyful as we welcome in the new growth of spring and the fun that it brings with it and the challenges of course which is great life is an exciting journey when you embrace it that way it's not the same old same old every year there's new challenges new goals to be set new achievements to to, to achieve i should say new goals to achieve yeah sheila Carr says your teachings have taught me a lot there thank you sheila thank you so much yeah we started working together in the in the groups way back last year at the beginning of lockdown yeah great to have you here thanks for your lovely comments spirit at mooney in your opinion was goddess uh anya bridget's sister anya's bridget's sister was you was goddess anya bridget's sister anya i don't know of this as i said there's many aspects to the goddess you can have isis you can have danu you can aphrodite you can have eru you can have bridget you know whatever you know deity within the goddess 
imagery, the feminine imagery that you see is can be valid. You know, Our Lady Mother Mary, another goddess image, uh, one that I had a beautiful privilege of having a vision with many, many years ago, because my um, upbringing was as a traditional Catholic. So my earliest programming would be to see Our Lady as this mystical being. And of course, when Spirit brought the sacred being to me, she was brought in the childhood beliefs of my tradition that she turned up as Mother Mary. And that's a story for another day, you know, possibly in my book. So, um, yeah, so Anya, you know, if, if you see her as being somebody sacred bearing it in your life and in your psyche and your, and your kind of storyline, well, then, yeah, that's fine. It's but it's the source. It's not about the imagery. It's the source. The source is feminine energy. It's this polarity. It's in within the earth. So whatever um, deity or image you use to bridge that between your physical and your spiritual and, and the energy of the goddess, so be it, it will invoke it for you. I have Bridget, I have my Bridget symbol that I wear here on my medallion. This is like my shield. And I have her above here as well. You can see the, the triangle. That was ch a channeled image that was sent to me um, just after I, I finished working at the Goddess Spirit Rising Festival that year in um, California. So I adopted that and brought it home, designed it and had it created. And today I wear it as part of my protection, you see. Okay. So whatever way it anchors in your reality for you, that's that's OK. You know. Once you know, you know, that it's accessing the energy because everything is energy. It's just that the this, this conscious and the subconscious mind, they respond to symbols. So if you see Anya or Bridget or Eru or Danu or whoever you see as being the, the goddess in, in your life well then you you know that she is the bridge that bridges between you and the disconnect and she connects you to the land and bridging and bridget sound the same don't they there you go so Ailish murphy thanks down Aveline murphy sorry says thanks down you're very welcome Aveline. and mary hayes says blessings down have a wonderful day yes it's just gone one o'clock guys and i'm just going to sign off now uh with our little talk and just before i go one quick thing i want to show you these are drums that I've been creating for the last couple of months in lockdown. I started a little cottage industry and they're on my website. This is a little 12 inch one you could make for kids or if you want to put one in your suitcase to go traveling. That's a, that's a 12 inch one that, that they can be ordered on my website. There's a, there's, a, um, there's a turnaround of about eight weeks from the time of order to delivery. Okay, I've got a big list of orders and here's a 12 inch one. Okay, 12 inch, and you see the handle on the inside there, you can grip it, and it's just a lovely sound out. And then, of course, you've got, there's a 15, which is about the same size as a barrel, and then, then there's an 18, and then there's a 20. So whichever one you would like, check them out on my website. I'm going to put the link in now, and um, thank you all for spending time with me today. I'm gonna, there's a few new people just coming in, so sorry, guys, if you missed the start of the talk, but you can check it out on Bridget's Celtic Grove Illumination page, and of course, it's going to be on Dublin um, Mind Body Experience website as well. Here we go. So spell it O H A R. Dermot O'Hara Online .com. That's my website. So if you want any more information about my work about Bridges Grove, do check in there. Do post me messages on my page, Dermot Shaman O'Hara, if you want. If you have any questions, and pop them in here as well before i finish because uh i'll give it under five minutes because a few people just dropped in there at the end so let me just say that dermot o'hara online there you go that's the website posted it up there on the stream and um bernard money sends hearts thank you so much for that and who else have we got in there donna mary mcgarrell this was amazing thought provoking inspiring healing thank you donna thank you so much for being here and for sharing your thoughts here with us audrey plain says dermot what kind of skin is the drum made from well these ones are made from the same skin that you get on the traditional irish barons they're actually a, a goat skin there's some that are done from what's called a rawhide which is from cows and um i've got some deer skin and some others coming in but they're quite expensive there'll be elk and there will be deer and um they will be quite expensive and um i i kind of um like working with the um the goat skin because in ireland it dries out quicker I found that drums that are um, of heavier skins, they're harder to keep in in our wet, damp climate. Whereas, you know, you, you find a lot of you know, find buffalo hide, cow hide, and 
uh, elk and deer in the in the states because it's a much drier climate over there and they can manage them and they can keep the tension but in our country it's easier to bring up the tension in a goat skin which is, is thinner but it's it's nice and you'll hear that they, they give off a lovely sound these are just the smaller ones but you know you can listen to it here and when i make the drums guys i do a call i give you a call and i do a video call which i show you the drum then i play it for you because the drum has been dedicated to you it's been when, I, when i'm making the frame the drum i put your name in it so it's yours and it's and it's dedicated to you so i play it for you so that you hear the vibration before i actually sit, mail it to you and you can see it as well so that's all part of it and uh, drum beaters are available as well they're a little extra but um the drums themselves they're lovely and i'm really happy with them they've turned out really really well so that's been my uh, lockdown craft that i've developed over the last 12 months um donna mary mcgarrell do you do ceremony while creating a drum absolutely every drum is dedicated to the person who is actually um ordered it their name goes into the frame as soon as i make it i make the frame first excuse me <clears throat> and of course each morning when i go into the workshop to make them the whole the stage there i do the prayers and the intention and i ask for my hands to be guided each time and that's what it's about it's about dedicating that drum to you from spirit not from me from spirit to you so that when you have the drum it's you and spirit i'm not in there <laughs> okay and joe mckinney nice one there thanks joe joe great to hear from you hope you're keeping well on this blessed day of spring equinox isn't it wonderful we're coming into a new summer and a new beginning and may all of this um virus stuff be lifted from our land and from our people and may we move forward in a blessed way so if i pass three today guys chuck Allah's celtic sweat lodge ceremony i will be doing that um five 15 minutes past five today will be journey of drum and that's actually a shamanic healing journey we'll be doing 8 30 tonight and don't forget guys big spring equinox healing ceremony and it's all about bringing everything mind body and soul into balance so it'll be a lovely guided visualization some drumming some chanting some singing a little bit of everything in it so i look forward to having you on for that uh, audrey mclean says i love the drums so i purchased one last year which is made from goat skin and i used to bring it to fire stands before the lockdown lovely stuff audrey excellent yeah the, the goat skin is good because it's it's quite thin and it, it dries out quickly particularly you'll find when you go to the ceremony if it's outdoors you know the cold air whoosh, down they go you know good idea to um you know what you want to plug it in there but i remember playing in a ballet group years ago and this guy used to play with a big beard he had no hair in his head you know and he used to carry around this shopping bag with his drums in it and he had a hair dryer in the, in, in the bag i said what's he got the hair dryer for she's you know he doesn't even have any hair you know so one evening there was winter time we were playing slatches of cake but she damp eating and we went in and the next thing the drums were you could see him and the, the skins had gone kind of gone all kind of wrinkled out comes the hair dryer. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go here's a little trick for you hair drawer so guys thank you for being here it's just gone 10 past one i'm back again at five past three i want to go off and get myself a bit of lunch cook myself i'm getting fed up i don't know about you but i'm getting fed up with my own cooking i've been in this house cooking for myself for the last over a year now and i'm sick of it i can't wait to get out and sit in a restaurant and have some lovely food served up to me can't beat it you know remember me lord that's my mother she used to say it oh it's lovely when it's handed up to you i never knew what she meant by god i do now <laughs> guys brightest blessings of spring equinox to you i'll hope to see you at either five past three or quarter past five this evening if not 8 30 tonight for a spring equinox gathering in bridges grove any other questions you've got send them into the page don't forget to like the page bridges grove illumination page please do like it come in post your comments questions whatever you want I'm here of service, whatever I can provide you with, I'll do my best. Thank you for being here. Thank you for giving me your time. Look forward to seeing you later today. Salam, Gurmagat. <laughs>